Hey, what's up, YouTube? We're here uh, prepping some trees for a log truck. It's a no cleanup job, but we gotta make sure the logs get out, and so we're getting them ready for a self loader. That tree, we'll probably fall that tree out here. Try not to wreck stuff. That tree, that's kind of a big one. That one, that one, that one. This, this beautiful one right here in the open, we get to leave that, so that's cool. That was Jeff Shredder. This is one of those ones where you don't want to stop. You really, really want to just keep working, but you have this little what if. So there's some limbs caught up in this oak. They're not terrible. They look like they would come out as the tree tipped. But if they didn't, if they held on, and it wouldn't take a lot of holding power because they're kind of strong when they're... I mean, imagine pulling a limb straight out of a tree and try to break it. That's really hard compared to breaking it this way, right? So it'd be holding on to the trunk like that. So if it held on out here, it could have a lot of force. And since the oak tree is behind the pine tree and over this way, it would hang on and pull the tree right towards this house. Super nice house too. Not that if it wasn't a super nice house, we would just go ahead and level the place. But what I'm trying to say is I want to face this thing, notch and drop it. And I'm pretty sure it would come pulling out of there but they didn't hire us to to be like doing the, the lottery you know so I gotta I gotta cut some limbs before I continue so the viewer might be wondering a couple things why wouldn't you do that clear those limbs before you made the face cut because certainly you wouldn't want to climb a tree after you've made a face cut right well, we don't really want to do that, but this is like a real life thing where I wanted to put it on the ground and then I decided I would go ahead and be thorough with my complete assurance that it comes clean out of that. Okay, so I'm just showing you the really real. And part of the really real is <laughs> you ain't making this tree tip over without a back cut period so if somebody wants to say we're dodgy I'll consider that a compliment although I would preferably clear those limbs up there before I made the face cut I mean, of course, right? But you know, you're you're trying to get things going. You're trying to get things on the ground, and then that makes it even harder to stop and do the right thing. The right thing being to clear these limbs. It makes it harder to stop and do that when you've already got it facing. <laughs> But it's definitely the right thing to do. I don't have my zigzag, I don't have a uni, I don't have nothing. Except this old Blake hitch. Not that this is my preferred method, you guys know that it used to be, but this rope does not like a Blake hitch. So I had to do a couple extra. I don't have my zigzag, my uni, nothing. I wasn't really getting ready to climb this. So, gotta make do with the old Blake hitch. Right there. Oh. 
I think it would have held on. I think it would have held on and pulled the tree right into the house. Yeah, it's in there good. Real good. Are there any others? Yeah, this is the one, man. It is married. That would have held on. And uh, been embarrassing. This is a super big hassle right here, but not as horrible as the other would be. He'd, he'd do this 50 times before he'd put the tree on the house. <laughs> And we're not really doing cleanup, so this isn't even part of it. I could just cut this off and leave it up here. But it's hard for me to do that. It's getting easier. This thing had 50 ways it was gonna tangle. Easy tree turned hard. So now the question is, will those clear? And I'm going to say yes. They'll clear. This one would not have cleared though. It would have come yanking on that tree at the worst time. trees pointed out there it would have just pulled it over boom and then that limb would have broke and let go right when the house was assured for maximum flatness actually it wouldn't crush it flat but it would harm it this is that new panther so the panther company switched bar manufacturers and we thought they were subpar because the channel didn't match the driver width and we were like no we can't sell that to our peeps man they'll just complain and um, I'm like a real tree guy and I'm trying to use it and it's wandering around and binding on me and I can't handle it I'm getting angry and I'm about to throw my saw out of the tree mr. panther so you're gonna have to figure that out and they're like we already made thousands of these and I'm like yeah but the thousands made wrong so so they redid it and um, so far the channel matches the driver width and it's working great today so uh, new panther stuff should be coming soon at monkeybeaver.com I believe let's see that took 19 minutes and 57 seconds to save a little embarrassment later on the house. I'd say it was worth it. I'll put you guys back here. No drama. This tree here is a situation where It'd probably be just enough, uh, yeah, it'd probably be just enough room to fall it if that tree was out of the way. And that tree is coming out, but it's coming this way. And we need to take some limbs off of it because of the antenna. And we don't have to clean up any debris that's out here. Anything that goes onto the road, we have to move out of the road. And so it's kind of one of those deals where it might be easier to climb it and, and drop a bunch of limbs over here in the field from above than it would be to fall it and pick them up and move them. I'm gonna try this little, this little steel with the uh, the new panther stuff on it on this tree I think I'm gonna like it judging by what I just experienced over there <laughs> 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 
This tree has a ridiculous amount of limbs or something. It's showing off or something. What is the deal, tree? Oh, I, can, I know, you're an open-grown tree. Okay, so these conifers that are typically tall and their first limbs don't happen until 50 feet up there, you know? They, uh, when they're grown in the open like this field here, then phototropism, which is the tree's quest for light, it, uh, it doesn't need to go tall and skinny because it's out in the open, and when it's in the open, it doesn't have to compete with the, a whole stand of trees for light, and so it stays kind of shorter and really bushy. Well, maybe I'll get a chance to talk to you guys a little bit. What could we talk about? We'll talk about cutting this limb off. And, oh, he tied on a saw lanyard. It's good to use a saw lanyard because if you ever have to, like, drop the saw, then it doesn't drop all the way to the ground. And, you know, there's nobody under me right now, but it's a good idea to protect the people under you by tethering your tools not just yourself, you know what I mean? There was a lot of years in my life where I didn't have a, a saw lanyard. Didn't even think of it. Didn't even know about it. So what we're gonna be talking about is not getting branches on my rope right now. So I'm gonna be cutting things in such a way that I don't get a branch across my rope and have to call somebody over here. So this is a 12 inch bar and I like to go at least 16 because it gives me reach, especially on large diameter stuff. In order to get flat to it and your bar is really short it's harder and you a lot of times have to do this which is fine but 16 gives you a little better reach I really like 16 but this is cutting great and it's probably a good size for this saw <laughs> those are the ones like that that you see all the homeowner videos where they just cut through from the back like that and then the branch swings under and it knocks a ladder out from under him. So like that, that last one you saw I manipulated it because the butt would have fell this way. I want the butt that way away from my rope. This one would fall on the rope. So it's the much frowned on one hand cutting, one hand pushing. So people hate that because young men and women with no experience cut themselves because they don't have two hands on the saw. And they try to make that like a rule like, you know, like everyone has to has to operate with two hands on the saw and I, I love freedom so I think it's cool that they get to use two hands if they want to and I also love that I get to use one if I want to. that battery saw right now I, w I wouldn't have to shut it off to talk to you and that's kind of nice I like talking to you guys but I'll start the saw doing all these little tricks I'm not really explaining them but all these little English tricks are to get the branches to fall everywhere but not there everywhere but there would be better grammar 
everywhere but not there <laughs> i don't even know what that means some english guy chime in is that a double negative or is that what is that is that some kind of english term that i intuitively know is wrong but not sure why <laughs> needs a carabiner right on the base of it a little faster to hang it up if I have something like that I borrowed this from Jeff in case you're wondering I thought you didn't have no gear well I just I don't so this one that'll want to be on my rope for sure it'd be better to cut it from the other side I'm not on the other side <laughs> Watch YouTube as the little butt piece comes off. I'm just going to shove it with the with the, the motor, the body of the saw. <laughs> now this one, it's kind of shaped like this. So when it falls, it's probably going to hit and bounce out that way clear. one I'm gonna do a post cut it's kind of hard to do with pine but it's doable so that's a cut here and then a cut on the side and then another cut on the side so that there's just a little post shape in the middle and that should make it fall flat it's not always doable with pine because it's so hingy <laughs> Let me show you what that looks like. See, first cut, second cut, third cut, back cut. So this first cut, if you're watching, this is where a lot of guys get pinched because it's good to get up into that a ways, but as soon as it starts to move, you gotta get your saw out of there. And it's actually, that was kind of like the safe version what I just explain to you by saying as soon as it starts to move but you can like fudge it a little and people are always messing with that line <laughs> and by they i mean me when i refer to people i am talking about myself <laughs> So I waited for it to swing back this way and then I cut it off because that makes the butt pop out. If I had to cut it off with it out like this and it would have hit and the butt could have come over this way. Cut. It, it, it was 
still hinging down. Pine is like that, or at least ponderosa pine. Some of the pine trees will pop like ice. This is a hooter. They're all, these, these limbs are ridiculous. This tree is showing off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang this, I'm gonna hinge it down and then I'll find some way to manipulate the butt out away from my rope there. So what, what do you suggest, YouTube? The foot? Okay, yeah, let's use, let's, let's use the foot. Put, get the spur in, and then right as it comes off, I'm gonna give it a shove, it's all about the timing. You wanna make sure that there's nothing that's gonna catch on your flip line, so I'll actually cut it a little low. Yeah, you barely have time, because gravity has faster reflexes than you. Once it starts to go, you got like, like mongoose fraction of a second to kick, to give it some inertia. Well, it's, you know, has no resistance against it. That's why it's moving so fast, right? That's your second where you get to affect how it moves in the air before it hits the ground and bounces. I could kick this one again. But if I just cut it off, it's not gonna fall on my rope. It might stand there, it might just stand against the tree. But... There it is. See, it's just standing against the tree. So far, my, my rope is unhindered. And I might be able to hit that. Oh, like say with this one and, and knock it down. Let's see. up under this because this is a big wad of pitch and I don't really want to run through it and gum up the bar if I don't have to. You might want to cut through a big wad of pitch but I don't. favorites YouTube you get a you hang it up and then you're kind of strong like this and you cut it off and you just shove like that with your hand I mean it just feels so arty you know like like you're an artist and uh, you know you get to do the follow through you know you're like Wucha! slow the camera Slow the scene down. Hero moment. Yeah. 
you know, just like that. Right here, YouTube. This is where we need a hero shot. Watch this. Yeah, without the dramatic follow through, you are not a hero. This one right here is like right over the rope. So I'm just gonna give it a shove that way as it comes off. to give you guys a view besides just here so this one's a classic uh, I'll fold it over my ropes right in there. once it's hanging I'll get my arm in like this and we'll do the hero do the hero follow through the crowd will cheer Some distance. Right? Timing. I got smart a while back and I started putting the main part of the glasses inside the shirt. One of the tricks to getting them where you want is knowing how fast your saw will cut. Or rather, how fast it won't cut. He's a shredder, for sure. So like, on this limb, I'll just show you. So as far as limbs go on this tree, this would be like medium size, maybe even small. So, the 151 might be able to cut all the way through it before it swings under and fouls up. That's where having good power with a top handle uh, saw comes real handy. Um, 
so if you have a tiny saw like this it's not super powerful but but if you have a, a chain with a tiny kerf and it's cutting good if it's not cutting good it's a, it's miserable but if it's cutting good then you actually get more performance so like this like that's a big heavy limb i don't know if i could get through that i have to keep the saw revved really high and then just try to you know follow through as much as i can and it, it might end up hanging on but let's try it because the panther chain has no anti-kickback links on it and so it has less drag and so it goes through the wood smoother oh. another way you can you can cheat it is to reach out and cut further out in the small diameter less weight area But that one got me, see? It swung under before I could finish the cut. That one that got me was operator error though because the one I did just after that was even bigger. And the trick is keeping the idle really high and not pushing too hard, slowing the chain down and bogging. And then gravity has faster reflexes than you and it'll swing under before you can cut it off. You know what I'm talking about. It's all about the nest. My rope's still coming up. That means I haven't buried it with limbs yet. DRT, you know, if it was SRT, it wouldn't even really matter because the rope is stationary. Stationary rope technique, SRT. Doubled rope technique, DRT or DDRT. I bet the saw is gonna be out of gas soon. It's a lot of limbs. I'm turning it off between cuts, saving a little bit of fuel, but I, I don't think it's gonna make it. Usually they run out like, well, you're making the back cut of the top. Rope is still coming free. Okay, that's good. We've been successful so far with uh, our mission to not bury the rope. I see a pretty nice I think that's a 240Z Datsun right there. I had two of those in my life. One of my first cars. I love that thing. I loved them both. A lot of fun. That thing covered in dust, but it looks like a clean car. They got two carburetors, six cylinder dual carbs. I think some of them have three. <laughs> Something I should warn you about if when you're hanging limbs like this, if your tree will even do it. Like that fir tree, it'd be harder to hang them like that. You could do it on some of those big limbs, but it'd be harder because it's more brittle. But you do it by, by cutting into the trunk more when you make the cut. Anyway, what I was gonna say is all of these limbs, if there's anything pointing back at you, you're gonna swing it under and these things are gonna stiff arm and spear you. You gotta watch for that, see? Cause they'll be coming to get you and Damien's over there. Looks like he put a pole line in the tree. Uh, what I was warning against is when you peel these under, if your tree will even do that, is sometimes it has branches that are coming to get you. Um, just watch for that, that's all I was saying. 
Once the wind comes up, then it, it can blow the limbs free of your tree. Like right now I'm getting some wind and it's, it's carrying the limbs that way, which is good because my rope is on this side. Tank lasts longer if you make one cut on each limb rather than turning it to confetti. We'll see. We'll see if Mr. Honicky in the third person can get her done on one tank. I just been talking to YouTube all day, Damien. Your customer sometimes is all, who's he talking to? <laughs> YouTube, what Damien's saying in my headphones right now is he noticed I was less slay-y than usual. And that's how he knew I was talking to you because I wasn't. <laughs> he says it could have been done a long time ago because I'm uh, uh, I'm just chit-chatting. In case you're wondering, YouTube, uh, the guy's gonna burn all of that scrap lumber, and that's why we were so cavalier with it. Seriously, August, this is the new iPhone. Seriously? How many times I gotta tell you to quit playing with your phone? <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when people play on their phone at, here at work. Okay, YouTube. YouTube assembly. This is what we got ready for the log truck. We cannot give this away, this ponderous pine. It is really difficult to find a home for. We're hoping we can give it away or I'm gonna end up stuck with it at my house. Uh, this is pine, same thing. You cannot sell it. Uh, that is fur. They'll want the fur. And if they take the fur, maybe they'll be nice to us and haul the pine to somebody that we can give it away to. But 
that's pretty bad. We got one fir tree and one little fir tree we cut over there. It's the only merchantable timber here. It wasn't always that way. It's like, what is happening in the world when lumber prices are insane, but you can't sell a pine log?